I've come across this free Windows optimizer everywhere so I decided to put it to the test to see if it's actually any good. Benchmarks will be at the end so let's get right into it. The optimizer is called EXM Tweaking Utility and it's by this YouTuber and boy oh boy does he make a lot of videos on it. So let's go to their website, well the website looks cool, boost FPS, decrease latency, dominate games. Wait can this actually make me good at Roblox? Anyways let's skip the premium option and just try the free version. Download for Windows. So I have to log in to download. They basically want my email for marketing I guess. Let's give them a totally legitimate one and download. Their premium utility claims to double the FPS so I expect at least 25% improvement from the free one. But before using the utility I benchmark 3 games, those being Fortnite and these are the settings that I will be using for both before and after benchmarks. Minecraft is up next and finally we got Rocket League. And here are the settings for the benchmarks. As you can see everything is pretty much set to high quality. Here are roughly the before values for average FPS that we are getting, we will go more in depth with the stats and everything at the end. So this is what you get after downloading it from the Google Drive link, the utility in the form of a batch script, a readme that says that it can be false flagged by Windows which actually happened to the lost optimizer I showed as well. This happens because these softwares make a lot of changes to Windows and are of course not signed by Microsoft which is really expensive. Then here are all the resources that it will be using, consisting of auto runs, a program used to disable a lot of apps, tasks and services from starting up automatically automatically, a custom NVIDIA profile, a custom power plan, their own wallpaper, very cool, a download link for the NVIDIA profile inspector, the source code which I did skim through and found nothing malicious but I would still recommend that you go through this yourself too. And finally the windows update blocker. Before applying anything let's create a restore point. I'm just gonna name it before exam so I can remember it just to make sure that I can revert the changes if something goes wrong. Alright now that that's done let's run the optimizer as admin. Oh I have to full screen it. Welcome, we are not responsible for blah 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 press any key to continue. Restore point. So it does give you that option here that's good but we have already created one so let's skip the restore point. It's scanning for resources, resources not found or out of date. Press ok to download them. Ok, so it's downloading the resources that I just showed you again inside the C drive in the exm folder. That is kind of stupid but I do get the point of relocating them. Downloaded resources successfully. Ok, and here we are finally inside the tweaking utility. It was recently updated so that's a good thing. Let's start with general windows optimizations. Apply general registry and windows optimizations, M for menu and we can revert tweaks too. It applies general optimizations in registry. Windows settings, PCD edit and more. Let's do it. So after applying a bunch of changes it opens up the animations. Here we need to uncheck everything except these three according to him. So sure let's follow him and do as he says. Apply and ok. Full screen. So I suppose these are the full screen exclusive optimizations. 1 to set FSC for Windows 11 and 2 to set FSC for Windows 10. We can also skip these steps. But since I'm on Windows 11 let's press 1. Operation completed, press any key to continue. Game mode, enable game mode for Windows 11 and disable game mode for Windows 10. That's not good but still let's press 1. Core isolation, disabling core isolation boosts performance but leaves you more vulnerable to driver based attacks. So if you care about the security just skip this one but I'm gonna disable it for the video. Let's move on to power optimizations. Do not do these if your PC has overheating issues. Well my PC certainly doesn't so let's do it. Apply EXM free power plan v7, yes. I'm using my own custom power plan but sure let's switch it to his one. Increases performance and decreases latency, may increase temperature. Disable power saving features, yes of course. Disable power telemetry, yes. Delete useless power plans. So it's going to delete the default windows power plans, let's just skip this one. Disable hibernation, fast startup and more. Sure let's do it. Disable GPU power saving features, yes of course. Wait why does it say Nvidia GPU? 
I have an AMD GPU and that's weird. But let's just continue. Next are the keyboard and mouse optimizations. Optimizes a bunch of mouse and keyboard related registry settings. Apply KBM registry optimizations, sure. So it just disabled mouse acceleration and a bunch of other annoying settings. Set KBM data queue size. Oh this one can really mess up the input if not set correctly. Let's see. So it gives you 3 options, 13, 18 and 22. I would recommend most of you to go either 18 or 22 just to be safe. Even though my system can handle even 10, I'm just gonna go with 22 for the sake of the video. Let's go back. Apply USB optimizations. Okay, so it disabled USB power savings and set some thread priorities. GPU optimizations. So it once again detects that I have an Nvidia GPU even though I'm on AMD. So let's go to other GPU brands. Apply AMD GPU optimizations. And it just did a bunch of changes. Hopefully it doesn't break anything. Next are the CPU optimizations. Do not do these if your PC has bad overheating issues. Apply CPU optimizations for Intel CPUs. General CPU optimizations. Disables power saving, C states and more. So sure, let's apply these. Once done, let's head back. Next is PC Clean. Clean temporary device data, so I assume it's like the device cleanup tool that clears the remains of devices that were once connected to the PC but are no longer connected. Windows Clean Manager. So it just opens up the disk cleanup utility. Sure, let's clean up. So we have to select everything here except the DirectX shader cache and it's going to clear out more than 500 MBs of junk. Let's press OK and delete files. Wait for it to finish and by the way it's completely safe since it is a built-in utility for Windows. Now that it's it's done, let's head back. Next one is the system debloat. If you want to revert anything, you can do it in our revert category on the main page of the utility. So I believe it's talking about the fixes and reverts right here. Disable game DVR and Xbox. Of course we want to disable them. Disable telemetry. So telemetry is basically the Microsoft spying services that collect data. So yes, we want to disable them and there's a lot of it. Toggle Bluetooth. Disable printing and maps. Sure, let's disable them. Toggle mitigation. So you can disable mitigations and also re-enable them from here. Let's just disable them. Mitigations are protections against memory based attacks but they come at a performance cost. So this should improve performance by disabling them. Disable diagnostics and error reporting. Yes of course. Toggle Microsoft Store. So this one lets you disable Microsoft Store and enable it if you need it. Disable Hyper-V. Breaks virtual machines. Most of you guys don't use VMs so you should disable it but I personally do use virtual machines so I'm just gonna skip this one. Disable startup apps. Let's see. So it's going to launch auto runs the app that I showed you in the resources. So once everything loads up let's just go through the logon tab and uncheck everything here that we don't want to start up with windows. I'm also gonna go through the schedule tasks and services tab just to make sure that I turn off everything. Once done let's go back. Windows update blocker. Disabling windows updates will break microsoft store. If you want to use it again simply press enable in windows update blocker. So here we can disable the updates and protect service settings but I'm gonna keep them enabled since I paused them from the settings anyways. Disable smart screen. It's that blue box that appears if you run something not signed by Microsoft which isn't too useful unless you are really concerned about security. So let's just disable it. Uninstall useless apps. Uninstall windows pre-installed apps. So this is going to automatically remove the apps that come installed with windows which can delete some apps that you want to use. So let's not do this one. Uninstall useless apps via settings. Alright let's open it up. Inside of here you can go through this list and simply uninstall anything that you don't want on your PC like this camera app that I don't use at all. Uninstall Microsoft Edge. Uninstall Cortana slash Copilot. Yes please I want to remove this chunk from my PC. Alright that's done. Storage optimizations. Frame slash defragment drives. Well it's not really recommended to defrag SSDs but if you have a hard drive, use this option. Disable write cache buffer flushing, once again no. Optimize NTFS, let's do this one. Optimize lost access time behavior and 8.3, of course. SSD boot drive, yes I'm using an SSD. Disable storage power savings, I'm going to select the SSD option once again. Let's go back to the menu. Memory optimizations, optimizes a bunch of RAM related registry settings for optimal performance. Disables a bunch of 
useless features which hinder your performance. So here you want to select the RAM you have, let's open the task manager, then go to performance and under memory you can see that I have 8 gigs of RAM on this machine. So I'm gonna select the option number 2 and hit enter. And it applied all these changes. Additional slash quality of life, set exm wallpaper, better wallpaper quality, show let's do it, disable UAC, this will just remove the annoying pop up when you run something as admin, show file extensions and dark mode are already enabled, real fortnite ping. Let's check this one out, I'm gonna select the middle east server and now it's going to ping the fortnite servers there. Well that took quite some time but the average result is about the same as I get in my game, so it's not really that helpful. EXM network tweaking utility, create a restore point, I'm just gonna skip this one, what harm could it possibly do? Well future me here, so it did a lot of harm. After applying these network tweaks, Epic Games Launcher just wouldn't connect to the internet, so I had to reset my network to make it work. So yeah, back to the video, just make sure that you create the restore point. This one has a lot of options in here, which we can apply from here. But what he recommends is that you go through this tutorial and then apply these settings. So let's do that. So after applying everything, let's check out the fixes and reverts, quick fixes and revert categories. So this is everything that you can fix in case they break, what is 5M doing here? Anyways, completely optimize your PC. Yeah, it just opens up their website. So I believe that's all, let's exit the utility and restart the PC for all the changes to apply properly. Finally, we can look at the benchmarks. Starting with Fortnite, as you can see, it improved by about 4.1 average FPS, while the 1% lows and 0.1% lows are pretty much the same. Here's also the in-game side-by-side -side comparison and we can definitely see an improvement, but it's just not as much. Let's put down the average FPS we are roughly getting inside of our notepad. Moving on to Minecraft, the average FPS improved by about 5 FPS while the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows saw some good improvement. The side by side comparison shows not too much of a difference at all but let's just note down the average FPS on a notepad once again. Finally we have Rocket League. So this one is really interesting as you can see before we were getting average FPS above 200 which dropped down to 169 after using this optimizer. Well the 1% lows and 0.1% lows saw some improvement because it was dropping a lot before which it still does as you can see from the side by side in game comparison but the overall average FPS dropped quite a bit. Let's put it into our notepad too. And here's the final verdict. I expected it to give us at least 25% improvement but yeah it pretty much failed to deliver. Is it still any good? I would say yes. Rather than not doing any optimizations, you should definitely try this one out. And there's one more very important thing that I forgot to tell you. 